Hey everybody, Buzz Miller of Wannabe Studios again. Today, we're talking about one simple thing. Thing that everybody wants. They want to find a diamond in the rough. They want to go on, on Craigslist. They want to go on Facebook Marketplace. And they want to find a great guitar for super cheap. So, what I'm going to do is tell you a couple of hints when you're out there looking. A couple of things you want to look for. A couple of things you want to avoid. So, we're going to start by this. I picked this guy up in Avon Lake, Ohio, at my favorite guitar store in Ohio, Ron Zeal's Guitar Center. If you go by, definitely go in, talk to them, they're amazing people. First things first, forget the name. It doesn't matter what's on this headstock. What matters is the wood between here and here. That's what you're buying. It doesn't matter the name. Now, quick little history lesson. Vester is a guitar manufacturer that made a lot of copy guitars of the time. This is actually designed by some of the same people that were designing ESPs and made in some of the same locations that those were made. If this were an ESP of this model with, uh, with this age and some of the, the items it had on it, it would certainly be close to a thousand bucks. This is a Vester and I picked this up for a hundred dollars. So, forget the name. We're not buying the name. What we're buying is right here. Next thing, put your hand around it. Do you like the feel of the neck? Forget the back if it's glossy or if it's rough. We can fix that. Do you like the shape of the neck? No two guitarists are going to like it exactly the same. Some people like a baseball bat. Some people like the original wizard necks that are so thin that you can sometimes never tell they're even there. So. Here's what you're buying. Do we care about dings in the body? No. We can fix those. We can always repaint. We can always fill those if you want. But they also give the guitar character. You're, uh, if you've got a bunch of dings, a bunch of hacks, some finish scars, that's great. We can buy the guitar for a lot less money and then we can go home and fix it if we want. This thing had a ton of uh, issues with the finish. I went home, sanded it down, got a, a nice finish on the flame and then re-candied it in red and then cleared over the top. I re-blacked everything on the back, put some pearl in there. I don't know if you can see it. I was missing a, uh, a cavity plate so I made one out of carbon fiber and this guitar is screaming. Flamed maple neck. This is a pretty awesome guitar. So what we're going to look for is a poorly set up bridge or a poorly set up truss rod. Now, truss rod's a rod that goes down the center of the neck. It adjusts the tension there. So, if you look down the neck and you see a, a bow, what it's going to be is it's going to create a lot of high action here. Don't worry about that. As long as it's a bow or a light bow this way, we're good to go. We can fix that with an adjustment of the truss rod as long as the truss rod's still working. A poorly adjusted bridge is a great way to find a guitar that's got the capabilities of being great, but is cheap because it's set up wrong, the action's too high, it's buzzing through here. Now, Floyd Rose tremolos, you've got your strings on this side, your springs on the other side. These are misadjusted so often. Go out and find one, find a picture that it's done wrong, or that it's not sitting in the right spot on the posts, or is sitting way up high because they've got way too much string tension and not enough spring tension. You can go home, you can fix it in an hour, get that baby back to about flat where they like to be, and set the thing up, have a great guitar. Now, a couple of things you need to avoid. When you pick up your guitar, you look down the neck. You've probably seen some of the old codgers at the guitar store. Pick the guitar up and look straight down the neck. The first thing I'm looking for when I do that is look at the last fret and look at either the first fret or the nut. If they're straight, you're good to go. If they have even a little bit of twist either direction, don't buy it. It's not worth it. If that neck is twisting, like I said, our investment is the wood between here and here. If it's twisting, that means the, the wood is moving. So let's say you're like me and we like to take frets out of everything and replane everything. So I pull all the frets out, I replane the thing, I put all brand new stainless frets and polish them and get all the ends just right. What did I do? 
I wasted all my time because the neck is still moving. It's probably going to continue to twist or it may even twist back. If you see that twist, don't buy the guitar. If you see a bow and then uh, you know, you've got a, a negative and then a positive in the bow, so you've got multiple movements in the neck, don't buy it. Again, the wood's moving. Even if you can plane it and salvage it, it's still moving. You don't want it. If you see a bow and then a flat and then another bow, again, those are the things you want to avoid. So, as long as you understand how to adjust a truss rod, which is pretty simple, put your Allen wrench that's the right size and twist it, positive and negative, what you want is not a dead flat fretboard. You want a little bit of curvature to it when you're done. Um, I actually put a feeler gauge in the 12th fret with a, a straight edge and that tells me exactly where I want to be but you just want just a little bit of curvature to your neck. So you do that, you learn how to adjust a bridge especially Floyd Rose tremolos. When you learn how to adjust them again Go out and find a cool $400 guitar that some kid's selling for $120 because it doesn't play right and fix it. If you've got dirty pots, if you've got dirty switches, three-way, five-way switches, don't worry about it. A, those are really cheap and really easy to change out. And B, a lot of times you can flip it over, take the, the cavity cover off, drip a bunch of isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and run that pot back and forth, run that switch back and forth. Sometimes the switches are open enough that you can actually take a little bit of sandpaper and clean the, the contacts. You can have that done in two, three minutes and have a perfect working guitar when you bought it from somebody who's like, ah, it's crap, it needs this replaced, that replaced. Again, pickups. We don't really care about what pickups are in it. We're probably going to change them out anyway. So, as long as it's got the pickup structure you want, humbucker, I like double humbuckers or humbucker single um, position, and sometimes I'll even put a humbucker in that single position. But if it's got the, the setup you're looking for, if it feels good in your hands, if it doesn't have one of these telltale disasters in the neck, go ahead and buy it. It doesn't matter what the name is. It doesn't matter the little things. We can change that. As long as the wood between here and here is good, it feels good in your hand, and it's got the setup that you can build from, go ahead and buy the guitar. I'd like to see in the comments some of your experiences buying guitars, because this one here, this is pretty awesome. $100 for that. Wow. If you hear it play, it's, uh, it's worth a lot more than $100. Bucks. But put your, uh, put your victories down in the in the comments and let's uh, have a nice little contest and see who bought the best guitar for the least. Thank you very much. Keep on rocking.